What's good, y'all? Anthony Cordova here. I wanted to give a quick update. I'm headed out to the dentist to get my teeth clean. But real quick, I wanted to give you an update on the 58, show you where we're at. Let's go. Yesterday was Monday, I didn't do any recording, but I came in and I filled some holes on that area that, that I wanted to kind of clean up a little bit that I didn't like. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with the way everything came out. The only thing I really don't like is the fact that I can't get in there with like a regular Rolock disc. I mean, even the three inch one, the little two inch one, excuse me, doesn't fit in there. It's like it's got a half inch overhang. It's like an inch and a half or something like that. I'm kind of left with these wavy marks from the, the little miniature belt sander. So I'm kind of stuck with these little waves, but some filler, it should be okay. No, not a big problem. I thought about going in by hand with a little file and just kind of filing, but I think that's getting a little excessive for the inside of a trunk. But other than that, I think it came out pretty good. There's a little spot that, like right here, that just goes in a little bit. I worked on it and worked on it, and finally I was like, you know what? It's inside, I'm not gonna trip. It's just a little spot right here. Even that, take a little filler, a little little block, and I mean, it'd be minimal, and it would be okay. So, did that yesterday, came in filled, finished grinding. I'm noticing on this, on this back quarter panel, on this left side here, if you look, if you look, there's a, there's a little, well, not little, there's a pretty good sized buckle in this quarter right here. And the telltale sign of a quarter panel or something being bent is, see how this right here, there's a little crack right here. It's starting right here in the original body seam. And that's gonna be lead right there. And there's a little crack in the lead right there that wants to come through after they blasted everything. And then also right here, there's a buckle that's kind of poking up. And then in here, you'll see that it's a little buckle right here. And also these, where this bracket for that convertible top is at, it wants to pull away. And anytime you see metal wanting to pull away from each other, if you look on the other side, if you look on this side, it's a little pulled away, but that's just because these are not threaded. They're actually big, huge sheet metal lag screws that go through this and, and bolt that on, that bracket. So these are a little pulled, but it's just double ply metal where these have more of a insert on this back, this back section. But in here, it's just kind of double ply sheet metal and it is a little rusted but also if you look in here right here that's ripped too so that could be from also from obviously corrosion there's corrosion there that tells me that and if you look over here on this quarter panel see this is the thing about when you strip these cars down you never know what you're going to find this car looks super clean but if you look on this quarter panel all this damage right here has been worked on. Somebody somebody did a bunch of straightening here, all this hammer marks. And all. They must have leaded because there's some lead kind of dripping down and it's kind of indented still. This has a little bit of a, of a buckle in it right here, some filler, whether that's lead or whatever in there. And there's some damage around this, around this light. You can see it's kind of sucked in a little bit right there where this one's nice and nice and flat. There is some lead right there because there's a body seam that goes down right here, right through here, but it's not pulled in. And then if you look further, somebody did just a bunch of patchwork in here where they just laid sheet metal over the top of this stuff. And even that inner section right there is all brand new, looks like sheet metal. And just kind of just fudge these and, and, 
and that tells me that this thing was pretty damaged because it's all kind of Frankenstein together under here. So what probably happened is this thing got at one point hit the back of the quarter panel and it pushed that quarter panel up and then buckled that this top part in. What probably happened is this thing either got hit underneath on the bottom and even down here there's some patchwork that could be just from rust but this is all kind of damaged around here you can see um there's some buckles right here going on and then this quarter panel in the middle is kind of buckled too so what happened is this thing probably got hit up in the back which made this whole kind of thing shift and it made that buckle up like kind of squeeze and then it, it buckled this right here in this corner because as soon as I cut that loose, where I had to cut that one little section out, it it wanted to it wanted to it wanted to fold in. It kind of folded in, so that tells me that at one point this thing was probably either ran over something in the back because obviously they ran over shit in the middle too. If you look at my last couple videos back, I showed you the frame and all the little brackets and stuff that were bent and all the, and all the floor braces that were bent too. So I guess they must've had a problem running over shit. Who knows, back in the day, people drove drunk and didn't give a shit and just did it right and dirty. What we'll probably have to do is get this thing somehow supported in the middle and pull down on this thing somehow and push up in the middle and get that all straightened out. Or I can do a little shrinking right here as well. Cause when I did try to hit it up, it just kind of tin can and that that tells me that this area is stretched out a little bit too as well so anyway that's the update got the left side done working on this rear body panel made a little patch yesterday for right here there was just a little little corner of rust like right in there so made a little patch panel for in there that went all the way to there and then that other one will come to to that part i'm making this little section right here right now this will be that piece right there that goes down around. I'm, I'm having to make these in two pieces, which I don't have a tipping wheel on a bead roller. If I had a tipping wheel on a bead roller, I can do all these in one piece where I can tip that edge and make it make it nice and crisp and then and then make these, these concaves on this. But I don't have one, so I just went ahead and put an angle in a piece of uh, sheet metal. So I made that edge right there and then I'll do a nice, then I did a nice pattern to the edge of this and then I'll butt, I'll butt that little Nike section swish or swoosh, if you will, right there. And then, and I'll do all the, I'll do all the curves in this thing, all the concaves and the curves before I weld it all together and then weld it together and then we'll install it. And then I can start installing this other stuff inside, but this stuff all has to be fixed right there before I install this inner part. It's a process, but it's coming along. I can move on to the next thing, which is the floors. And then who knows what else from there. But I appreciate everybody that's followed and subscribed and liked and all that stuff. straight up bit me so this section this piece will go in in there and then this will continue out here for this big rust hole right here and then there's a big bunch of rust right in this corner right here now as I'm making this piece out of two pieces it'll weld right to the edge of that 
just to avoid cutting all this support area. You can see all that support area out. I could chop all that up, but I'm trying to do as little intervention as possible. And there's still some good metal right here that I can weld to and fill up that little area and gap and just file that nice. And so I'll just go right to the edge and just butt it right to that edge right there. This is what I got going right here. I made this piece and this piece also does it, it goes, it concaves in this way. Obviously it has, has a bend in it. And then um, it also, you know, does a curve here. I still gotta go in here and define that line a little better. But when I think I'm gonna do that once I get this welded in there, I got it pretty much in there where I want. I got the, I got some contour on it with the, went over with the dolly with my round end dolly and just just kind of put some contour in it where it, it'll lay down. It's kind of hard to show you with one hand, but this thing will lay down all the way to the other end over here. And then I'll hang that over and just trim that at the end. down a little bit I'm gonna leave it clamped down and then I will take it over to the welding table and then I'll weld from the inside grind all those welds down and then do a couple more spots here on the outside and then I'll go ahead and shape this thing out a little bit more and then come over here and trace it and then cut out this section and butt it in there
crazy is the more that I get into the metalwork, the more that I feel comfortable shaping stuff, building stuff, and just making parts for this car in general. When you first go into something, I don't care if you've done it before, sometimes you just feel a little nervous. If you're rusty, you haven't done it in a while, then I haven't really built a lot of sheet metal parts in a long time. So it was a little nerve wracking in the beginning, but the more I get into it, the more comfortable I'm getting. So the rest should be not a breeze, but easier. Somebody had asked me, why don't I just, you know, cut in butt, like cut to this edge, basically cut a little, cut a little strip for the inside. And I've done it before. I've cut in butt some shit, let me tell you. But this is so much better grinding on this face right here and, and getting to planish. I mean, with, with a cutting butt, you're building up an edge and you gotta go in there and if you know it's a little low, you gotta go in there and fill and then grind again and, and try to make the edge nice and nice and crisp. But this way, you make the edge on the actual sheet metal and then you're grinding out here and you're planishing out here on this face of this so it, it looks a lot nicer and it just, it's a lot nicer build in the end when you make these pieces. So as you can see the back of this rear body panel where I, put, where I made this piece on the last video is all completely welded in solid and I just have to weld this little part right here but I wanted to make sure I can adjust this piece here. This piece is clamped in and actually it's tacked in right here and tacked in right here on this edge. I still have yet to tack this piece in. I have to cut out a section of this. The way this works is this piece goes in first. In here, I ran a backing plate, which is, which is, which is just another plate that, that goes around and matches the shape of this other piece. I'm gonna fill in this, this piece right here. So there's a plate back in back of this and it actually follows the form of of both of these pieces right here. The way I cut these two pieces, you can see this piece right here on the outside is also tacked in. I cut some of this, some of this upper section here away and you can see some of this rotted section still here. And then I actually cut a relief cut in these on both sides on the, on the bottom, on the bottom area here on this, on this one piece here. And then I, I cut a relief here and kind of and welded it all together to kind of collapse that a little bit. And so this will, this will go just like the stock pieces will go like this. I still have to manipulate this a little bit more to get it to close that that gap. Um, I might have to cut a little relief here and then cut some here, and then bend that in a little bit so that'll reach that'll reach this section here. So that has to happen. This is all tacked in, like I said before. This rear section is all done. And that's nice and nice and clean. There are some relief cuts that I had to make here just to, so I can cut this section here. But that's all fully welded in. If you look underneath, all the there's some uh, some holes, and those are all plug welded to the to the frame of this trunk. So that's where we're at right now. Right now, what I'm going to do is continue finish welding all this, kind of line it up. I'm gonna run some screws in here to this backing plate. This is just clamped in right here. I'm gonna run some screws in here to, to bring this backing plate closer to these, these holes so I can plug weld those. And then I'll, I put some uh, weld through primer in, in here on the back side of these panels and also on the on the frame of this, this trunk uh, drip channel or whatever you wanna call it. But that's where we're at right now. I'll go in here and I'll scrape those with the little screwdriver and get those back to bare metal. And then I'll weld those plug welds and then I'll work on making a little section for, for up in that corner where there's some, there's some rust like right up in here. I'll make a little section for in there. And, and then I'll continue to finish this, uh, to finish this one right side after we're done with, with this section here. So it's just piece at a time. Everything has, everything has an order that it goes in. This piece had to go in first. And then, like I said, the backing plate, and then I put this piece in there. And I fully welded this piece after I, after I got this piece kind of tacked in. So I'm kind of just working my way around. And then, like I said, I'll get to that side. 
and then we'll be back on the floors and hopefully our sheet metal order will be in by then we have a bunch of aftermarket pieces coming in for the floor for the trunk and for the quarter panel so that's what it is I'm gonna run these through this this piece here into that backing plate to suck that that plate up to those holes Closer. So I'm just gonna go in here and hammer around a little bit. Try to try to get a little closer to that backing plate. You don't want that that piece of molten metal that little ball on the end of your wire you want a nice clean clean wire when you start welding that way it contacts and sparks or ignites right away So we got that intersection somewhat welded up, but we're gonna go ahead and hit it with the grinders. close up real quick I still got to go through here and do another round and fill in all those voids right there not gonna do the outside right away I think I'm gonna go grab the trunk and throw it up there and make sure that this line is gonna be in alignment with the edge of the trunk I did make it to the form of the body, but I still want to make sure that that trunk is going to line up with this line right here.
now I'm going to go in for round three on this area right here and fill the rest of that that butt weld and then I'm going to go in here and fill these plug welds I kind of hammered around and got this thing laid flat against this other piece here where it joins here in that factory seam so I'll go ahead and plug weld this and plug weld these other ones here and then all will be left is this seam here and this outside area except for right here where I'm gonna have relief cut a little bit and bring this in so I can make that other piece that goes here reach reach this edge right here is fully welded from here to there just got to clean that up prep those welds and then all the plug welds are filled on the inside all the way to the other piece now I just got to go around and fill the rest of this seam right here and obviously fill that seam on the inside as well but first I got to get that trunk up there make sure that we're in the right right position I can still hammer on this hammer this around and and, and mess with this if I need to because I haven't full haven't welded it at all or clamp it down or or screw it down whatever it needs but this is all done that's done in there that piece is done so now just this outside piece and then we're on to finish the rest of the right upper side over here so as you can see that seam is welded solid this upper section here all the plug welds are done and the welds are prepped went in there with the die grinder and then went in there with the scotch right wheel and took care of all the rough marks from the grinder this is all plug weld to that backing plate I still got to go in here and fill this seam right here with weld and then obviously fill this other seam on the outside but like I said before I do have to put the trunk on and make sure that this line is going to line up with the trunk I can manipulate and hammer and, and still still mess with this line that's why I left it open it's just tacked here and here and tacked around here but I still can come in here and hammer and like I said and um, clamp down I, once it's clamped down it gets a little tighter on this on this uh, backing plate in here and then I'll be able to go in here and and finish this seam and <laughs> up this trunk really needs a lot of adjustment those hinges need to be bent a little bit I'm noticing I never really paid attention to how this thing was lined up before but it couldn't have been good but the, the gap is kind of uniformed or somewhat uniformed all the way around 
even though it's fat and, and a little bit tight on this side, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna final adjust this thing. I'm just trying to make sure that the that the gap is uniform all the way around. I am a little bit a little bit tight right here in this area right here, but I feel like this trunk when they put this this patch on the bottom here, they they kind of if you can see right here it kind of it, it bows it bows out a little bit right right in this area where they weld the patch on, so it's it's wide right here and then it goes in and then it comes back out right there. So that has something to do with that. But I will go in here and make sure that this is clamped down nice and tight. But other than that, it fits pretty good. It's, it's nice and uniform all the way around. But like I said, this trunk really needs some help. So I'll do that on the final adjustment before I do any filler on this thing. But I can go ahead and clamp this down and screw it down first probably and clamp it really good and then tack and make sure that this is nice and flat in here because it is this this piece right here that I made is kind of sticking or or bowed out this way a little bit so I will make sure that I go down and clamp that really nice and make sure that that's all that that's all nice and flat and make sure that I hammer hammer on that edge a little bit so it kind of turns that flange in a little bit that way but other than that it's good to go I can weld the rest of this out here the only other concerning area is right here where I weld where I got these two pieces coming together. I'm gonna have to heat shrink in here a little bit so I can suck that in a little bit. It is sticking out a little bit right here in this area. But when I do weld it, I'll make sure that I tap that down. When you weld, while the while the weld's still hot, you can you can tap around a little bit. And then whenever you whenever you it goes to cool, it'll it'll shrink it down quite a bit. So right in this area right here where these these two these two edges meet right here where that seam is at, when I weld, I'll make sure that I go ahead and tap that while it's hot and then maybe even hit it with a little little compressed air and cool that and really make sure that that gets sucked down and shrinks that area right there. But other than that, I have to fill that gap right there, which is not bad at all. It feels actually pretty nice. I didn't grind too much on those, so so it should should be good after I get all, all done with with welding on that. ended up dying the battery died not dying completely but I managed to get this thing all welded on this corner and all the welds prepped and it looks pretty good I'm gonna show you what it looks like so there it is all prepped and ready to get filler on it once I get this trunk all adjusted and obviously I gotta still finish this upper section over here the only part that kind of is dipped in a little bit is like right here, but not bad. All in all, she fits pretty good. Just like I said, right there, there's a little bit of where it sucked in a little bit, where I joined these two pieces in there, but not very bad. A little bit of filler and a little bit of adjustment on the trunk. But all in all, looks pretty good.
also in here, I managed to get that that in there more flat. I can go in there still and hammer around and dolly and stuff and if I need to, but so far it looks pretty good. It feels good too. Once I run my hand over, I just ran a Scotch Bright wheel over all this. So I'm not going to touch it, but that's what it looks like all welded. So what I got to do now is I got to relief cut this and then move this in a little bit so I can fit that other piece on here. That's what we're doing. I've also got to cut the rest of this section out so that I can fit that other piece in here and then I'll fit that other longer piece in this section here. get this piece tacked in before I go home. So let's get it. good for tonight I'm gonna put my tools away and get my ass home so this piece is tacked in right here have it clamped down the holes are punched it's overlapping this part where it's supposed to be so this is like exactly where the factory seam was at 
wanted to this, this car to look as factory as possible. I still gotta go through and finish cutting all this section out where this is rusted. to get it all tacked in this one little part right here and I knew it was going to be a hassle because it was wasn't at the right level and just right here in this area it kind of instead of being at the right angle it kind of lays a little bit down but what I can do on Monday is go in there from the underneath and with the hammer and and just kind of peck this edge up a little bit because it's just a little bit down but other than that, I mean, it all came out pretty good. The, the gap's nice on it. I fit it pretty nice. So I'm happy with it as far as that goes. But on Monday, I'll come back and I'll hit the plug welds, hit the, hit the, the punch holes with the plug weld and fix this little area right here as much as I can get that. I mean, obviously it's inside, you know, you can put a little filler right there. It's not going to be a big deal. Well, the upper trunk section is done for now and I'm back on the floors. The only thing I didn't record was me fully welding in this right weather strip channel slash trunk jam on the upper part, but I wanted to show the finished product. And please do me the honor of liking this video if you got some entertainment or value from it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I drop a new video. <laughs> Thank you.